I, I want to thank for uh, this kind invitation and also want to thank you for being still here. We are very late and uh, outside of a wonderful day, so thank you very much. And uh, in what's uh, uh, the agenda of this presentation? Um, I will try to answer two questions, two questions, and uh, they are both related uh, um, with the obsessive com to uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. The first uh, is uh, related to the way our obsessive patients reason. I think that uh, uh, all of you have uh, um, sort of an intuitive idea that uh, our obsessive patients reason, reason in a very peculiar way. And so I will try to um, identify the main characteristics of uh, this kind of reasoning. And then uh, I will try also to uh, see with you what is uh, the mental state that in such a way rules uh, this kind uh, of reason. So what is responsible for this uh, peculiar reasoning in these uh, patients. So, um, to the same, I uh, will see with you a representative case uh, of obsessive patient and the reasoning, of course, and uh, um, I will give an account, a theoretical account, about uh, the characteristic pattern, um, starting from this patient, of uh, um, obsessive reasoning. And, uh, um, of course, these accounts are from uh, our clinical observation. And, uh, Finally, I will outline some evidence uh, supporting the characteristic, uh, the, our hypothesis about uh, uh, obsessive reasoning. And finally, I will try to go very, quick, uh, very quickly uh, to the conclusion. Okay. So, uh, I think that uh, the most part of you maybe already uh, know these, uh, these patients. Uh, here we call her Maria. And uh, she was... Uh, um, I have to thank her because in such a way she inspired uh, our line of research on uh, obsessive reasoning. And uh, what's the problem with Maria? Maria believed that touching uh, a photograph uh, of a very well-known actor who died of, uh, for IBS could cause her to contract this uh, illness. And uh, the point now is uh, how did she draw this conclusion? And uh, here we have a report that uh, was checked with the patient and uh, she approved it. And she said, the photographer must have been close to Rock Hudson because the photographer was a close up. The photograph, sorry. So the photographer might have been contaminated. So when we, he developed the negative, he could have contaminated it. The negative was in contact with the print of the photograph and so could have contaminated it. The man in charge of printing the newspaper used the photograph and so he could have passed its contamination on to the newspaper printer. The printer could have passed the contamination on to the picture in every newspaper. So when I touched the newspaper, I too might have been contaminated. Now the question is, uh, how did she argue in support of these inferences? Uh, in other words, uh, how, um, what justifies holding such a weakly justified um, conclusion? And uh, please notice that uh, this conclusion was also bizarre and implausible for the patient herself. So, she said, gosh, touching this photo upsets me, it's like touching the sick person himself, and what if I were contaminated? It would be terrible, how silly I was. I should have been more careful. Now what am I thinking? It's absurd, however, how can I be so certain of it? The photographer was very near to Rokatsun, the photo is actually a close-up. Yes, but you don't get eggs by being close to a person. You have... Uh, to have an intimate contact, okay, but how do I know that the reason there hasn't been intimate contact or not? The photographer himself might have been a homosexual. It does seem unlikely that intimacy took place in a hospital room and with a seriously ill patient, but as I was not there, how can I rule it out? So from this uh, report, that was uh, again checked and approved it, uh, with, uh, from the patient himself, 
We try to um, uh, identify the ingredients, the main ingredients of this uh, uh, characteristic uh, um, uh, reasoning. And uh, first of all, we call uh, uh, this kind of reasoning a typical semi-dialectical. And uh, here we can see that uh, the page, and of course we generalize uh, what we uh, have seen with uh, Maria to uh, the most part of obsessive patients. And uh, what we can say about this, uh, this pattern, so the steps uh, of this kind of reasoning. Individuals focus on a danger, and for example, on an action that they have carried out. They feel intense anxiety about the danger of contagious contamination. For example, in Maria, gosh, touching this photo upsets me, and so on. They may also feel guilt. Their action was unnecessary and wrong because it could have harmed them or others. How silly I was, I should have been more careful. They try to infer that no possible mechanism exists that could put them at risk, and they search for counterexample to the danger. Now what am I thinking? It's absurd. They used to high standards, and so they can't reject the danger. However, how can I be so certain of this? They may return in a loop. And at the end of this process, we have a paradoxical effect, because what was at the beginning quite implausible as danger for the patient, um, finally become real. So the danger is now real. Here there is, a, um, uh, to sum in such a way, the steps that we uh, saw in the prior slide. So what we can see is that uh, obsessive patients, in order to exclude the danger, Imagine all the possibilities of the danger in order to falsify them one by one, but with certainty. The problem, so they search for counterexamples of these possibilities, but the problem is, the, is that they adopt too high standard, and so at the, at the end they cannot reject them, and so at the end of this process they have a long list of examples of the danger. And so they can only accept it and, of course, um, worry about this. In what follows, I will show you um, some evidence supporting our um, hypothesis about the uh, semi-dialectical reasoning uh, as, a char as characteristic of obsessive patients. Uh, and uh, we start with the first study that we run with psychiatrists. We say, okay, if uh, your account is correct, then also psychiatrists should be able to identify the uh, semi-dialectical form of reasoning as uh, typical of uh, obsessive reasoning, regardless uh, of the content of an inference. And so, to this aim, we uh, presented to a group of uh, psychiatrists six pairs of uh, vignettes. Uh, each pair had uh, the same content, for example, um, appropriate for hypochondria, general anxiety, and so on, but uh, one uh, um, had uh, the corroboratory form of reasoning, now I will explain, and the other one had uh, um, the um, semi-dialectical form of reasoning. Also, if you uh, look at the vignette on the uh, right hand side, you can see here we have, um, first of all, two vignettes with the same content. In this case, uh, it's a worry about uh, um, an illness, so uh, an apochondriac content. And here we have a person who is worried about the possibility of uh, um, being uh, ill. So, see, of course, uh, the, the beginning of both the vignettes is the same, but uh, in the corroboratory form, we used the ingredients uh, um, um, absolutely well known, thanks also to um, all the research published on uh, um, the better safe than sorry strategies. And so, in this case, uh, we see that uh, the patient focus on the danger, so the possibility to have uh, to be um, to suffer from uh, liver cancer, he searches for example of uh, this possibility, this uh, uh, hypothesis, and of course at the end of the process uh, he can uh, only confirm the danger, so the possibility um, of being uh, uh, sick. In the other case, uh, with the semi-dialectical form, uh, we used uh, the same ingredients uh, we 
uh, identify in Maria's reasoning, that is, uh, patients focus on the same danger, but he try to falsify it, uh, searching for the, um, all the possibilities of this danger, and the problem is that uh, he fails in falsifying them, and so at the end he has to accept the the, um, the, the worst hypothesis. So I remember an uncle of mine who died from a liver cancer. Mm -hmm. okay. um, who died from liver cancer after a lot of suffering, but he was in his 80s and the liver cancer at my age is not frequent. On the other hand, it's not impossible and so on. So we gave this uh, um, vignette to the psychiatrist and we asked them to uh, make a diagnosis using the, um, this list of possible diagnoses, so general anxiety, hypochondria, and so on. And what we saw um, is that uh, um, the results were in line with our hypothesis. That is, they um, identify, they recognize the semi-dialectical form of reasoning as typical of obsessive patients. The interesting thing is that uh, um, they were not able to uh, explain the basis of this diagnosis. So it was uh, quite intuitive, uh, and this is very interesting. So then we decide to run some studies with the patients themselves. So what happens with said patients? And first uh, we wanted to see whether the obsessive patients themselves uh, recognize uh, these uh, peculiar strategies, these typical strategies, so the semi-dialectical strategies, as more similar to their own reasoning, but especially when they, of course, uh, um, uh, are worried about something related to their start, and whether also they spontaneously produce uh, this kind uh, of reasoning during therapeutic sessions. So, with this first study, study we examine whether they, uh, the obsessive patients select the semi-dialectical style of reasoning as more similar to their own reasoning. And to this aim, we use the same uh, six pairs of vignettes we used with psychiatrists, and uh, with two groups of patients, obsessive versus uh, patients affected by other anxiety disorder, and we ask them to uh, tell us how similar was uh, each vignette to how they reasoned when they um, were thinking to what they were worried about, and because, of course, of the disturb. And here we have uh, the results. As you can see, uh, in this case, we have uh, um, uh, the number of obsessive patients who rated the, the semi-dialectical vignette as more similar to their own reasoning, and we can see that the most uh, almost all the patients tend to reason to recognize the dialectical versions of the vignette as more similar to their own reason when they are worried about something related to the star. By contrast, they recognize, they tell that the corroboratory versions of the vignette are less similar uh, to the way they reason when they are worried about. And, uh, here we can see uh, what happens with patients affected uh, by other anxiety disorders. In this case, uh, it's uh, the opposite. We can see that uh, these patients tend to recognize the confirmatory um, reasoning as more similar to their own and the dialectical form of reasoning as less similar to their own reasoning where they are worried about something related to the disturb. But uh, what happens during therapeutic session? Do patients, obsessive patients, uh, uh, actually produce uh, this kind of uh, um, style of reasoning? And uh, to answer to these questions, uh, again, uh, with, uh, um, uh, we run a study with two groups of patients, uh, again, obsessive patients versus patients affected by other anxiety disorder, and uh, two therapeuti ther therapists uh, that were, of course, uh, blind to the hypothesis being tested, <coughs> were asked, asked, to this, um, asked the patients to uh, report uh, their thought respect to a worry related to their disturb and an unrelated worry. So we had two sessions, one uh, each for um, 
a report related to um, worry relevant for the disturb and another for uh, other topics. And uh, during this session, patients were helped with questions like uh, what did you tell yourself, what thoughts did you increase your mind, and so on. These uh, reports were audio recorded, and uh, then uh, we asked two independent judges, again blind to the hypothesis being tested, to code these uh, reports, these verbal reports, uh, into two exclusive categories semi-dialectical or uh, corroboratory. Of course, uh, we gave them a clear definition uh, for each kind of uh, style and uh, also uh, examples, two examples using, for each kind of style, using the uh, vignette we used in the earlier experiments. And uh, what was our hypothesis? Of course, we expected that uh, obsessive patients uh, use, uh, produce the semi-dialectical strategy more often in reasoning about topics uh, pertinent to their illness than in reasoning about other topics. So, um, uh, worry leading to only anxiety and so related, for example, to work relationships and so on. By contrast, we expected that uh, patients suffering from other anxiety disorder use the corroboratory strategies in both cases. So, uh, both with uh, um, uh, a related worry and unrelated worry. So here we have an example of uh, uh, reasoning uh, by um, an, actual, an obsessive patient that is very representative and the work that uh, uh, was coded by uh, our judges as uh, um, semi-dialectical. I get off uh, the bus and attach someone, I physically feel that my hand, or rather my fist, punched him, I think I hit him on the head, I think he could be dead. I looked back, but the bus was already gone. I keep thinking about it. If I had hit him, he would have at least reacted. He would have called for help. He would have beaten me. Yes, but it all happened so fast. But people would have said something. They would have stopped me. What if no one noticed it until it was too late? And here we try to uh, see whether there were the same ingredients that we identify at first with Maria's reasoning. And here we have um, reasoning from an anxious patient who was reasoning about again a topic pertinent to his illness. I always think I could die, I imagine to die. Yesterday I thought that my grandfather suffered from two heart attacks and I often feel pain to my left arm. Moreover, last week I moved and so I have also taken many heavy boxes. I was very tired and stressed. I felt tachycardia and my heart beat so fast, also when I was driving home. I know that my doctor thinks I'm exaggerated, but I could not ignore what I felt. I kept on thinking, and if it could be a true heart attack this time. And here we can also identify the ingredients of the corroboratory form of reasoning. So, let's go again to the results. And here we can see um, the results uh, regarding uh, topics related, uh, so reasoning produced uh, for topics related to the, the starb, and again we can see that uh, almost all obsessive patients tend to produce semi-dialectical form of reasoning, while anxious patients tend to produce uh, the corroboratory form of reasoning, and uh, this, uh, there was uh, instead no differences, no significant differences between the two groups of patients, uh, when they um, uh, was re reason on uh, uh, topics that were not relevant uh, for their stars. I told at the beginning of this presentation that I wanted also to try to answer to a second question, which is very relevant, of course, which is, uh, but uh, why our obsessive patients uh, reason in a such a peculiar way? And so, what is the origin of the semi-dialectical reasoning? And uh, in order to uh, find an answer to this question, we at first went back to Marie again, and uh, reason on this case, uh, we uh, formulate our hypothesis, and the best solution was that Maria 
was trying to demonstrate beyond any reasonable doubt that she did not put her health at risk as she wanted to avoid to be accused of having acted in an irresponsible and guilty way. And to defend herself from the accusation, she tried to demonstrate herself that the danger did not exist. In other words, the point is that in order to avoid to be accused that I have been uh, uh, guilty for having acted in a responsible way, I can only demonstrate that there is no danger and so I'm not guilty. guilty. So, of course, this hypothesis in line with the wide church or demonstrated that the fear of guilt, mental state, uh, has a crucial role in the genesis and maintenance of obsessive compulsive disorder and that the perception of traits leads to feelings of guilt in our obsessive patients. So, the idea is that the, this mental state, fear of guilt, leads obsessive patients to try to exclude the possibility of being guilty for having caused the damage. So, the point is, uh, uh, and, and our attempt was to find uh, uh, an answer to, uh, is the fear of guilt the origin of the semi-dialectical strategies? We know that uh, a um, very high number of uh, studies already demonstrated that uh, a mental state of danger is responsible for the corroboratory pattern of reasoning, but so far no studies have investigated the origin of the semi-dialectical reasoning strategy. And so we run a first study, and uh, the study, um, uh, to be study took part two groups of patients, again, obsessive patients versus patients affected by panic attack, attack and uh, these patients uh, were asked to uh, read the two stories during two different uh, therapeutic sessions. Uh, each story leads to a negative outcome, I will show you in a moment. One of the story has uh, a content eliciting it, while the other one elicits anger. Here we have an example of a story eliciting it, and uh, so we said to the patient, suppose that it's Sunday afternoon, and, and you are with uh, your knees. Uh, start, um, you are playing with uh, uh, hair on the sofa when your nose starts uh, itching and uh, you sneeze. Uh, you don't care and keep on uh, playing with hair. Later, it strikes to you that your knees might be sick because, uh, because of your sneeze. It would be for uh, your carelessness. You might have been more careful and so you feel guilty. Uh, here is the same uh, um, story, but this time uh, um, uh, produce, uh, in the story had to uh, elicit anger. Suppose that I took my niece to the kindergarten and I see her playing with other kids and the teacher, while I'm reaching them, the teacher's nose starts itching and she sneezes. She doesn't care and keep on playing with my niece. Later, it strikes me that my niece might be sick because of her teacher's sneeze. It would be for her carelessness, she might have been more careful, and so I feel angry. Of course, in this case, uh, the patient is not responsible for the, the negative outcome. So, after having read each story, patients were asked to try to reassure yourself about uh, this possibility. Try to demonstrate that this falls beyond any reasonable doubt. Write all the thoughts that come to your mind. And again, we asked um, uh, our two judges to code a total of 48 patients uh, written, uh, sorry, there is a uh, mistake, uh, written reports into two exclusive categories, semi-dialectical again and uh, corroboratory. We use the same procedure for the prior uh, experiment. And uh, we expected that uh, obsessive patients uh, use uh, the semi-dialectical strategy in scenarios in which they are responsible and feel guilty for a negative outcome, so in the fear of guilt condition, while they uh, use the corroboratory strategies in, uh, strategy in scenarios in which they are not responsible and feel angry for the negative outcome under condition. By contrast, we expected that uh, patients suffering from anxiety disorder use the corroboratory strategies in both kinds of scenarios, so guilt, condition, emotion, and under emotion. Here we have uh, again a, a reasoning uh, from uh, a representative obsessive patient who was reasoning uh, on a content eliciting guilt. Surely it doesn't depend on that. 
bit, but uh, if I was called, um, it is the mere fact that I have sneezed makes the air full of gems. Maybe the window was open, therefore gems could have gone. But nevertheless, they could have contaminated the key. Surely it has been a coincidence. But if this is not the case, and again we can see uh, the same ingredient we um, identify for the semi-dialectical reasoning. And here we have uh, um, a reasoning by an anxious patient who is reasoning on a content again in visiting guilt. The probability that germs are present on there was quite high. And if the kid was ill on Sunday night, probably she was really contaminated by my needs. So here we have the result, and uh, as you can see again, almost all obsessive patients tend to uh, produce a semi-dialectical reasoning during the the uh, session, while anxious patients tend to produce a corroboratory strategies when, we, uh, when they were faced with a story eliciting uh, guilt emotion. And uh, in case of the story eliciting uh, anger emotion, we can see that uh, both groups tend to uh, produce a corroboratory form of reasoning. So, to sum up uh, what we have seen, so we can conclude that uh, from this study um, that obsessive patients uh, actually make semi-dialectical inferences as shown by the fact that the ability of psychiatrists to diagnose them regardless of the contents of the inference, the fact that obsessive patients recognize the semi-dialectical reasoning as more similar to their own again regardless of the content of the inference, and the fact that OC patients spontaneously produce the semi-dialectical reasoning if they think about topics that are the star relevant. As regards to the second question, so what is the origin of this uh, um, peculiar way of reasoning, uh, it seems that this strategy actually depends um, on the possibility of being guilty, that is uh, unacceptable uh, by our obsessive patients. So, um, in such a way, they try to exclude this possibility with a certainty. Thank you. That's all.